What if I told you that we share the planet with a predatory insect that dates back 320 million years to the Carboniferous period? This is all about the dragonfly. Around 320 million years ago, long before the first dinosaur, and probably your mum, Insects sprouted wings and took to the air, and one of the first to do so was the dragonfly. Not only was this insect one of the first to fly, it was one of the largest insects that ever existed. Boasting a wingspan of 60 centimetres or 2 feet, these flying carnivorous monsters are a far cry from the dragonflies of today, with the world's largest known being the helicopter damselfly with its 19 centimetre or 5 inch wingspan and body length that hunts in the Central American rainforests feeding on all weed spiders and everything else can get its grubby little jaws on. These living fossils are often seen zipping around close to waterways. They are voracious predators of the skies, picking up unsuspecting prey like flies, moths, butterflies and even other dragonflies on the wing. Their jaws are made up of labium and labrum, which catches the prey and holds it secure while some mandibles and two pairs of lower maxillae start to chew the victim alive. But dragonfly nymphs will give you nightmares. Female dragonflies are capable of laying hundreds of eggs in batches over days or weeks. The ovipositors of dragonflies are like hypodermic needles that pierce plant stems, rotten wood, leaves or even the riverbank and inject their elongated eggs. If I was a dragonfly, I would get all my brothers and sisters to subscribe to my channel, and probably even like this video and share it with their friends on the Facebook. You may also be interested to know that in this week's Inverticast is about dragonflies, and we will be live streaming at 7pm GMT on Saturday night for all those people who would rather learn things than be down in the pub. Some species lay exophytic over, which are round and laid within a jelly-like substance that is deposited just below the water's surface, laying one or multiple over at once. At this time, the males of many species are known to guard the females by staying linked to her and dipping her under the water to lay eggs before pulling her up again like the baptism from hell. Males of other species will hover close by to ward off potential threats and if need be, sacrifice themselves to save the female. Depending on the species, eggs can hatch within a few weeks or lay dormant until the following spring, especially if you live somewhere like I do, which is twinned with the North Pole. When the time is right, a tiny pro larva will burst from the egg and wriggle its way to the safety of the water and molt within a few hours. Those that hatch already submerged will molt almost immediately after hatching. As most of us only ever see dragonflies themselves, it seems like they have a very short lifespan, but most of their life is spent in the larval stage, and their quest for prey at this stage in their lives can be anything but up to five years, but averages at around two years across the board. As in all insects, temperature plays a huge part in this development, and in cooler regions this is likely to take longer. The larva will do nothing but hunt for food in this stage and will molt 5 to 14 times until they're fully grown and ready to take to the air. The powerful, extendable, hinged jaw of the nymph can shoot out at great speed and grasp its prey, dragging it back to the mouth parts to be chewed and consumed alive. Its list of prey is wide and it will tackle leeches, crustaceans, worms, snails, tadpoles and even small fish. Dragonflies don't undergo a pupil stage like other winged insects, but go directly from mid to adult in one smooth transition. They may spend days at the surface of the water learning to breathe air and get ready for the big push before venturing out by climbing emerging vegetation or crawling onto the land to find the perfect stem so they may undergo their final dressing room change. This final molt is like no other the nymph has completed before as it pumps fluids around its body, pushing out the head, thorax, legs and eventual wings from its larval skin 
and then pulsing pneumolymph through its wings to expand them. Like other emerging winged insects, it will have to wait to allow its wings to stiffen and be ready for flight. If heavy rain starts during this time, the process can be thwarted completely, and several years of preparation could be ended within a few minutes as the soft tissues are destroyed, and the dragonfly's life is over before it can complete its life cycle. If it succeeds, a small maiden voyage will take place to test out its new wings, followed by several more awkward attempts until it soon masters its piloting skills. Once the wings are fully hardened and the weather allows it, it will start hunting for dinner. Flying takes a lot of energy and dragonflies need to fill most of their day hunting for food, and will often be seen skimming over the water's surface on warm sunny days, picking off other flying insects and devouring them. Within a week, the adult dragonfly will reach sexual maturity. Having taken a break from the water's edge, it will now return in search of a mate. Some males are fiercely territorial and will defend against other males once it has found a site that it deems fit for breeding, constantly battling mid-air duels to ward off potential threats. Once a female is found, there is no room for romance with this flying fossil. He will immediately seize her by the scruff of her neck with his abdominal clamps, and the female will curl her abdomen to meet his in a position that Kama Sutra could only dream of. They can continue the mating process for anything from a few seconds to several hours, depending on species. So if you ever wanted to come back as a dragonfly, may I suggest a blue-tailed damselfly who achieves the latter. Life is short and sweet as a dragonfly, some only having lifespans of 10 to 15 days and other 6 to 8 weeks before dropping lifeless to the floor and becoming food themselves. Dragonflies can and will bite humans if you catch one and start poking at it. And unless you live in Central America, I wouldn't worry about it breaking the skin. They also do not sting like many people believe, even though they carry some worrying nicknames like the Devil's Darning Needle and the Horse Stinger. To sum it up, unless you jam your finger into the mouths and hold a gun to their heads, then it is very unlikely that they will ever suffer a pinching wrath of a dragonfly. As with all animals, treat them with respect and care they deserve, and they will do the same to you. Even though humans are destroying their habitats, squishing them against their car windscreens, and turning the planet's climate on its head. To add a little more myth-busting brilliance, I would also like to clarify where it's got its name from. The stories tell us it was the early Christians that named it the Devil's Fly, and it was badly translated to English as the Dragon's Fly. This, of course, as you expected, is poppycock. It is derived from the old English word for drone or buzz, drogon plus fly. So now you can tell your Sunday school teacher that he needs to watch this video instead of preaching that it is an evil creature from the fiery depths of hell itself, but it's just a harmless fly that does more good than harm, as far as we're concerned. I've now had enough of Dragonflies for video, and if you want more I strongly suggest you listen in or watch the stream this Saturday on the Inverticast channel. Cheerio! Thanks for watching.